Hello, my name is Sip Mendes. Welcome to Sip's Wood Chips. And uh, it's been a couple of months since I put a video out, so trying to get back into the mood of things. Um, it's it's October, so I'm ready to start making things for Christmas. For Christmas, I like to make a lot of toys, so I make things like spinning tops. You spin them with your finger, and I like making those. And I also like making little cars and uh, little trucks. And I make these from uh, scrap. And um, my daughter lives in California, and she has a friend who makes cutting boards, and uh, he also makes uh, uh, bookends, bookends. And he does a lot of glue ups, laminates things together. And these sometimes don't work out as a uh, cutting board because they'll they'll crack and they'll fracture. But uh, they're large enough for me to make little cars and things on the bandsaw. And uh, here's another one. Looks like he was cutting with the router and got a big old big old notch in there. And so when instead of throwing them away, uh, I get them. <laughs> And that really helps me out. But for making these cars, I need wheels. And each car, of course, takes four wheels. And to make these one at a time really takes uh, longer than it should. So I found a way to make four at a time. And what I do is I have a, a little uh, holder here. It's, all it is is a, is a piece of uh, plywood. And I, I'll use uh, 5 16 axles and then I use a little end cap and this I can put the head this on one end of, to the headstock to my spur and this end to my tailpiece so I just mount my uh, my four blanks all at one time then I put my little end cap on here and I spin four at a time and uh, the ends caps they work just like bushings if you're familiar with pen turning. That They tell me what size to make them, how, how far down to turn them. And uh, it works out pretty good. So I'm going to show you how I made this. Before you start any project, make sure you read, understand, and follow all the instructions that come with your power tools and equipment. Woodworking is fun, but it's important to work safely. To start, I usually set my compass a little bit larger than my finished wheel is going to be a sixteenth of an inch, maybe even an eighth of an inch. Then on a piece of wood, this is popular, I start drawing my circles. I've already drawn five here. So I just uh, place my compass down near the edge of the previous circle, near the edge of the wood. Press down good and hard because I want to make a good pivot hole. And so, so so when I have to center this later, I know exactly where the center is going to be. It's much easier to drill the holes in the, the wood before I cut them out on the bandsaw, because that makes them easier to hold. And I have my drill bit set so that it just barely pierces through to the other side. That way I can, I can drill the whole thing out on one pass. I used my bandsaw, I detensioned it. So I made this little thing here. It's got three magnets on it. I put it around the blade to remind me that I need to tension the blade before I start.
it's you don't have to be you don't have to be very accurate about this. Um, if you stay on the line or outside the line, it's good. Avoid cutting inside the line because you're eventually going to chew these up on the wood lathe anyhow. To make the jig, we need to know where the center is on these last two wheels we're going to make. The first one we're going to drill all the way through. Well, we're going to drill only so the tip comes all the way through. I hope you can see that tiny little dot right there. That's the, the tip of the bit coming through. On the second one, I'm going to reset it so that it only goes within about uh, a quarter inch of going all the way through. So I'm going to set it about a quarter inch from coming all the way through. And that's because I want to make a little stop in it. And as you can see, it did not go through. Now by hand, with a hand drill, I'll drill the rest of the way. This one, I hope you can see it in there, is that uh, you can see the tip of the brad point bit. It's made a center place there. And using uh, just a hand drill, I'm going to go ahead and drill that the rest of the way through. Put it down in the center. Square it up. Okay, and there's the center hole. Now I'll go ahead and cut these out on the uh, bandsaw. To make the jig, I need my, I need four wheels, four blanks for wheels, and I need the two wheels that I didn't drill all the way through. So I have a uh, deep one, and I have a shallow one. I'm going to put a little bit of glue in there. I'll put my finger over the hole so it doesn't drip out the other side. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue in there and I'm going to glue this dowel rod right in there. And I want to make sure that glue comes up on this side and then I'm going to wipe it off. And using just a paper towel I'll just go ahead and wipe that off, the excess. And I'm going to let that dry for about 10, yeah about 10 minutes. It should get good and tacky in, in 10 minutes. And I'll just wipe that excess off and over here too. I don't want any more than, than necessary. What I'm going to do now is um, put four of these on here. There's one, two, three, four. Okay. Now hold it together a little bit and then I'm going to let that set for about 10 minutes or so. Once the glue has uh, set up, we need to cut this shaft here. And I would cut leave maybe a little bit more than an eighth of an inch. Because you can always cut it shorter, but you can't make it longer. Now, this end cap should fit over it, and you can put it in the lathe. Okay, so here we are at the lathe, and here's my, my little jig. This extends out a little bit, and there's enough room that this can go in and out. And uh, that little mark there, and I'll put that on one end, mm -hmm. and then I'll put this one on the other end put some tension on it and we're ready to spin. 
That looks good. And I'm going to spin these down to an inch and three eighths. That's what size I've been making my wheels. And I'm going to start with just a shallow, shallow gouge. I expect these to compress down a little bit, so that's not too unusual. Whoa. See, they're pretty much round already. There's still some low spots, and they're right about the the uh, width I wanted. Well, so I guess I'm going to have to go down to inch and a quarter, or maybe a little bit less there, because I have to get down at least to where till they're perfectly round. So they need just a little bit more, so have a notch in that one. pretty good. There's a little bit of a notch there, but when I sand it, it'll be fine. And it's a little bit more than an inch and a quarter. It's a little heavy on this side, so I'll take it down just a little bit more. good. Okay. So it's a little bit heavy here and a little bit heavy there. So I'll take a little bit more off. Got some um, rather coarse sandpaper here, so I'm going to sand them while I have them here.
I'll put a little block of wood on here. Get them straight. Now, I need to mark the seams of where the wheels come together, and you'll see why in a minute. But I need to make sure that I can tell exactly where they're touching each other, where they're meeting. Sometimes if we look at the grain, I can see it more clearly. So I have my uh, spare point, and I'm just going to, this will create the chamfers in my wheels. may have to do that again in a little problem. So this one is a, um, a bushing. This one's a bushing. These two are touching each other. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and use a thin parting tool and this will be the insides of these two wheels. So first I'm going to cut on this side. eyeballing this. It's, I'm going to try to get down to about a half inch. So these two are wheels are touching together, so I'll try it again. If I get down to about 5 8 that'll be really good. And that looks a little pretty close to what I want. Okay. And then again, I'm going to chamfer the, uh, the edges of the wheel. Make it look more like tires. I'll sand them. Okay, that looks pretty good. And so there... Oh, I need to redo that one a little bit. There 
are my wheels. You can see the little the little ring there that keeps them from rubbing. And there's the next one. Here's two more. And the last one. And those will be my four wheels. So while I have them here, I'm going to redo this when I need to get rid of that little edge. And um, I need to widen the ones on the right. I need to make those a little bit better. Redo those again. Put that back over it. Tension it, and we'll do it again. So we want to get more on this one. Get rid of that little edge they had on it. That's better. And then with my parting tool, I want to get a little bit more on the right. So here's the uh, wheels. This is the end cap, the one that was not drilled all the way through, only about halfway. There's one wheel. This is the little uh, washer that I wanted so that the edge of the wheel does not rub against the body. Here's another wheel. These probably need a little bit of sanding to, to get rid of these little sharp edges, but the, the, those are fine. Another wheel. And the fourth wheel. And this is my other part of my little jig. There you go. Well, I think the, uh, I think my little, <laughs> Well, I think the, the little uh, mandrel there, the little jig for holding my tires, has really worked out well for me. If you've enjoyed this video, click on like. If you're not a subscriber, click on subscribe. You can um, leave comments, ask questions, and get answers. If you're not a, a, a member of YouTube, sign up for an account. It's quick, it's easy, and uh, you'll enjoy it. It makes the entire experience a lot more enjoyable. So until next time, take care.